Hi guys, I'm Ben and today I'll be talking about drum tracking. So firstly, what is drum tracking? Basically, it's another way of saying drum recording. It's the process of turning your drum audio into tracks. What I'll be showing you in this video are the basics of drum tracking, which will get you off to a good start. And if you want to see more videos like this one, do remember to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So what do you need for basic drum tracking? Well, you'll need a full drum kit, somewhere to record them, a set of microphones, leads, stands, a laptop computer, recording software or door, an interface, and a pair of headphones or in-ear monitors. Today I've got three songs to do that need drum tracks. I need eight individual tracks for the producer stroke mixer to have options. For the drum tracking, I'll be using my Focusrite Claret 8 Pre-X interface. The microphones I'll be using are a Beta 52 kick mic, an Audix D6 kick mic for the inside of the kick drum, two SM57s for the over and underside of the snare, a pair of E604s for the toms, and a pair of Blue Spark cardioid condenser mics for the overhead. As the condenser mics, they'll need 48 volts of phantom power. The drums are a set of Gretsch Renown series. I have a Ludwig 402 snare, and the cymbals are all Zildjian. Now I suppose technically this could be classed as an overdub session rather than a drum tracking session, mainly because the music has already been tracked without drums. Therefore I'll be overdubbing drums on already established tracks. But for all intents and purposes, it's drum tracking. Okay, so once you've got your drum kit set up and you've got the mics on, you've plugged everything in, now let's get some levels. Play the drums at the loudest volume and make sure your levels don't peek into the red. Adjust the gain dial so the levels are around the minus 10 to minus 6 dB mark and that'll leave you with enough headroom should you need it. If you like downloading free things, check out my free report, The 5 Deadly Mistakes Beginner Drummers Make That Can Cost You Thousands. The link is in the description below. Head over to your computer and open up Logic Pro. So setting up our door, uh, I'm just going to, logic here, I'm just going to make sure it's on audio. Um, I'm going to check that it's a focus right interface, correct. And I'm going to change the number of tracks to eight because we need eight tracks or channels. So this is to create a new project. All looks good to me. I'll create that. So sample rate and bit depth are the two main factors of digital audio that affect the quality of the files you record. I've been asked to record the sample rate at 48 kilohertz and a 24 bit depth. So what we have to do, we have to make sure this session can do that. So go to file, project settings, audio, and then we just want to change the sample rate to 48 kilohertz. There you go. And if we go to the recording, we can see that the 24 bit is there. We can adjust what how we record it. If we record it in WAV file, or if we could record it in the AIFF file, which is um, Apple's equivalent of WAV. Make sure you rename your tracks so that you know which track is for which mic. We also need to make sure that the input on each channel matches that of the interface. So in input one, we have the kick D6. This is input two, which is the kick 52. Input three, which is the snare top. Input four, which is the snare underside. Um, it says E604 there, but it's actually a 57. Um, then we've got the 604 on the tom. Input six is the, for the floor tom. Input 7 is the overhead, and input 8, again, is the overhead. So now we should get levels on each channel. So you highlight all the tracks, arm them by hitting R, and let's see. 
we just need to add the track that we're going to play along to so if you go to the top right hand side of your logic and I search for the track one of the tracks I'll be playing along to okay this is the one okay just pause that a sec and all you have to do is click on it and drag it over and it should there you go it's created a track for you and as you've noticed this track has a click already included so I don't need to use the internal click here on my door but I'm rather lucky in this case because I don't need to grid this drum tracking session because um, there are clicks already included with the tracks that they want me to play along to so I don't need to do too much you just drag in the track and play along that's pretty much it and we're ready for some drum tracking remember to arm the selected tracks with R and then press record Here's what the drum tracking looks like on Logic Pro. As you can see, I've made a couple of edits here, there and everywhere. And as it happens, the producer stroke mixer only wants these raw files. So I don't have to do any processing. For example, if I go to the mixer, I don't have to add any EQ here or any sends to any auxiliary bus channels. And that's pretty much it with basic drum tracking. All that's left is to export these files ready for sending. You highlight your tracks that you want to export. These are the raw files. And if you go to file at the top and you go to export, eight regions as audio files. There we go. So the format we want is the WAV. Uh, the bit depth is 24, which is exactly what we want. Um, I like to tick the bypass effects plugins because, as I said, the producer and stroke engineer wants to mix this all himself and wants to add his own plugins so he doesn't need anything from here, he just needs the raw drum files. Then you just need to know where to save it. So you can either save it in Logic or you might have a hard drive that you can save it into, but we'll save it in Logic for, for now. A new folder and I'll just call it drum tracking and create so there we go uh, overload protection only yep yeah, that's fine and we just export the tracks if you then check your music files there is drum tracking and there's all the drum waves ready to send via email and if you want to download my free report, The Five Deadly Mistakes Beginner Drummers Make That Can Cost You Thousands, the link is in the description below. By the way, if you check out my two mic drum recording here, you'll see that I recorded with a two channel interface at a rehearsal studio. So depending on what you need the drum tracking for, two mics will do just fine. Thank you for watching my drum tracking video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and I'd love to hear from you. So do leave a comment below. And if you wanna see more videos like this one, do remember to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell and I'll see you next time.